Hola mi gente and welcome back to the channel. This is Sean from We Are Investing. Are we witnessing another epic short squeeze when it comes to the stock market? Because today we had a lot of stocks that absolutely took off and many of these stocks were the Wall Street bet stocks that took off in late January. For instance, a company that didn't have a high short interest but was really moving in late January, BlackBerry, was up 10% on the day and an, an additional 5.93% in after hours trading. AMC has had a great day as well. AMC today is up 19.2% and it is trying to break $20 in after hours trading. As you can see, it had a high of $19.99. Now, AMC has been moving and it's not just today with great gains in this stock. If we back out the chart and we look at the one hour chart and we draw a trend line from here to the top, you are going to see how massive these gains really are. We're talking about 63.34% gain in just five days for AMC stock. Another company that is taking off that was mentioned in Wall Street Bets, probably the most famous of all, GameStop is also having massive returns. Today alone, the stock is up 15.82%. And if we back out the chart and we take a look at this trend from the bottom here to the top, how many? How much has GameStop increased? GameStop right now is up 46.38% in the last seven days. Now these are massive gains, but are we witnessing a short short squeeze in all of these stocks, in some of these stocks, what's happening in the overall market right now, what are my overall thoughts, let's talk about all of that and more in this video. Now, in my personal opinion, what I am seeing right now is a lot of speculative trading in the stock market, which isn't something unusual, but it was definitely cut down over the last couple of months. A lot of that speculative trading went over to the cryptocurrency markets. And since the cryptocurrency market has dropped, has crashed, when Bitcoin went from values of $65,000 and had lows of $30,000 and right now is trading at around $39,000. I think a lot of money got put out of the cryptocurrency market. There was a lot of trading going on in speculative coins like Shiba Inu, SafeMoon. There were a lot of speculative coins that people were trading. That was the thing that was popping. That was where the money was. And now I think that money is starting to trickle back into the stock market. And that's why you're seeing these kinds of stocks increase in value because the people that are trading and investing in those speculative coins are the people, the same people that are trading and investing in these Wall Street bet stocks. So we're starting to see some money come back in. And also there's another element that you have to add to all of this. And those are your diamond hands. The people that are holding these stocks, they're not selling them. So that is going to impact the stock as well. And I'm going to to explain why on this video. But around $750 billion because the total global market cap for crypto was around $2.5 trillion at its peak has been wiped off and that money is somewhere else. And I think that money is heading into the stock market. Hence why we have seen such great days in some of these speculative stocks. Now, everyone believes that the reason why these stocks are moving up is because there is an epic short squeeze that is happening right now. And that this short squeeze is led by a high short interest, meaning that there are a lot of shorts out there in the market shorting or targeting. Sometimes they use the word manipulating these stocks. Now, I want to go over this. I wanna give you my overall thoughts, but in order to do so, I need to make sure that you understand what shorting a stock is. Now, this is a pretty simple process if you break it down into steps. The first step in order to short a stock is you need to borrow a share. You need to borrow a stock. So let's say you have a friend, he has a stock of AMC and AMC is worth $100 a share. You borrow a share from your friend and then you instantly, you sell it. So you sell that borrowed share. If it's worth $100, that means that you get $100 up front. So that is automatically, instantly put into your portfolio. But you have to keep in mind that you still have to return a share. 
So a way a short makes money is if a stock falls, if a stock drops, because then they can buy that stock back and give it back to their friend. If the stock drops to $50 a share, they'll buy it at $50 a share and they'll give that share to their friend, which they borrowed the share from in the first place. And now they no longer owe anyone any short sh uh, shares, but they got $100 up front they spent $50 to buy a share and give it back to their friend, so they made 50 bucks. If the stock goes to $200, then they have to buy the share at $200, give it back to their friend, and they only got $100 up front for that stock, so then they lost $100. With a short, your risk is unlimited because a stock can go as high as it wants, and you would have to buy at that extremely high price. Your reward is only as much as the stock is worth because let's say it's $100, it can only go to $0. If it goes to $0 and there is no more stock, you don't have to return anything, so you keep all of the money that you got up front. And that is how shorting a stock works. Now, for a short squeeze to occur, you have to have the stock go up. And as the stock goes up, those that are shorting it feel the pressure because they're losing money. And they might say, all right, I need to buy this stock in order to give it back to my friend. And then when they buy the stock, that increases the share price as well because you have more people trying to buy the stock. Now, there are some factors that need to happen in order to have a short squeeze. You need to have a decent amount of people shorting the stock that need to cover in order to get that buying pressure of shorts covering their position. Another factor, and this is the factor that I think is playing out here, is you need to have a lot of people that do not sell their stock. The reason why is because when you look at a short interest, it's usually um, displayed, is usually presented to you as short percent of float. All that float means is the float are the shares available for trading. So you have the shares outstanding, which is the total amount of shares for a company. Let's say a company goes public and they are going to offer a hundred shares out there and that's how they raise capital during the IPO. But let's say 25 of those shares are held by the CEO and there are restrictions. He cannot sell his stock because they are vested with the company. They're part of some kind of compensation plan. Those shares are not able to be sold. They're not available for trading. So they are excluded from the float. The float are the shares that are available for trading. So the reason why they present the short percent of float, the reason why they present it in this way is because when shorts go to cover, they can only cover from the shares that are available from trading, hence the float. Now the float is reported as all shares excluding the restricted shares from the insiders. But the thing here is that if you have diamond hands, that means you are not selling and if you are not selling then your shares are not available for trading meaning that they should not be considered part of the float now basically what that means is you are going to artificially increase the short interest for any given stock if you have enough people that are diamond handing their common shares. The reason why is because the short interest over float is just equal to the uh, amount of shorts is the short per uh, percentage over the float. And if this number remains the same, the short percentage, but the float reduces because you exclude the people that are diamond handing, that means that your short interest is going to go up. Now, I do think that there are a decent amount of people diamond handing this. I also think that a lot of people are speculating and trading this stock as well. So when you have people buying in to trade it, that is increasing the amount of buyers, right? So you have people coming in to trade it. They have speculative money. They have play money that they are um, bringing over from the crypto market. So that increases the amount of buyers. 
Also, as the stock goes up, you have shorts that are trying to cover their position. That is also increasing the amount of buyers. But the amount of sellers remains the same because you have diamond hands who are not selling their position. So the amount of uh, the amount of buyers is increasing almost twofold, but the amount of sellers remains the same. So in this case, then you have an increase in demand and then you all increase in demand, but a decrease in supply. So demand is up and supply is down. So what does that usually account for? Then that means that in order for these people to buy the stock, they have to pay more and entice the sellers to actually get rid of their shares. And as the price goes up, then shorts are more likely to cover because the stock is higher and higher. And eventually they will get margin called because they cannot cover their position financially and they are forced to buy. So all of this combined is what I think is happening right now. But I do not want to underestimate the amount of buyers and traders coming in from the cryptocurrency market. If they then move back to the cryptocurrency market or they are happy with their gains and they sell, do not think that all these people buying are diamond handing this stock, then that is going to increase your supply and that means people are going to pay less. So that is something you need to keep an eye on because I do not think that this is going to last forever. And I do believe that the short interest has been reduced, but because of the people diamond handing these stocks, your short percent of float is actually much higher than reported because those that are diamond handing the stock, those shares are not available for trading and the float are shares that are available for trading, hence these would not be considered part of the float. Now I know that this is a lot to throw at you, it is very confusing, but overall, what I think you need to be doing if you are invested or trading in these stocks is you need to have your price target set. And if you have your price target set, you need to sell when it hits it because if you do not and you become greedy and you continue to increase your price target, you are going to get caught in a scenario most likely where the stock falls too fast and nobody buys your share at the price you're willing to sell it at. So always, whenever you invest or you trade in something, always have a price target in mind and be ready to pull the trigger when it hits that price. Because the hardest thing about owning and making money in the stock market is knowing when to sell and actually selling a stock. It's easy to buy a stock, it is hard to sell a stock because greed always gets in the way. So with all that being said, me gente, if you like this video and the content that I am providing, please consider joining the Patreon. It gives you access to a Discord server like this one. This is the Discord server where we talk stocks on a daily. And we share with each other right now, we got a 10K challenge going on where we are trying to convert $1,000 portfolios into $10,000 by sharing the due diligence with each other. We pick stocks together. We try to find opportunities for small accounts. So if you are managing a small account, I highly recommend you join this challenge and try to double up time and time again and get that $1,000 to $10,000. That's a goal we are all working towards in this Discord, in this community. And and it is tailored towards small investors, which I think benefit the most from joining a community of other investors because it's the best way to learn. But with all that being said, please consider hitting that subscribe button, ringing that bell, and smashing that like button as always so that YouTube will notify you when I make more videos and I'll catch you on the flip side. It's been real. It's been fun. It's been real fun. And this is We Are Investing and together we are invincible. See ya!